Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Open Door United Church of Christ. Yes. This is our first Sunday with our new name, and we're very excited about it. We're going to be having a celebration in September. Uh, once Carrie Shin and I have a chance to meet together, we'll let you know all about it. So to share the good news that we're the Open Door United Church of Christ. Whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we are having a Taze service. It's different than what we normally have, and so we invite you to follow in the bulletin. It will really help us if you silence your cell phones because there's going to be a lot of silence. Even though we have silence, the, uh, the noise of children is very welcome. So I would like us to begin. Also, in your bulletin, you have a connection card and an offering card. Uh, please fill out the uh, connection card if you're visiting with us. Let us know how you heard about us. If you'd like to meet with me, I'd love to take you to lunch or coffee. Also, we're asking all members to please put your emergency contact information if you didn't do it last Sunday because we're updating our records. And we recently had an incident where somebody had an emergency and we could not get a hold of their family because we didn't have the information. And it does, I do carry it on my phone. It's a mobile app. So please fill that out if you, even if you think we have it, but you didn't do it last Sunday, put that in. And then those connection cards will go in the offering plate. And if you're visiting with us today, please don't feel like you have to give an offering. That card will be your gift to us. For the rest of you, we need to continue to support our ministry here, so your gift is very much appreciated. Uh, just a little brief note on George Haskell. Patty is actually here today. Hi, Patty. She came home from Texas just for, I mean, you can imagine being away for so long. She has a lot of things to attend to. But George is in a regular room. He's talking. He's eating. He's getting antsy. So hallelujah. He has a long way to go. He has more surgeries. Uh, but we are praising God for those answered prayers. So to help us prepare today, I'd like you to take in a deep breath. Breathe in the breath of God. And then as you blow out, try to release all the tensions, all the worries you had this work, this week. We can't deal with them now. We're just going to let them go. And then breathe in God's good spirit. And breathe out. And let us continue to worship through the prayer.
Chazé service helps us balance between doing and being. As Christians, we emphasize all kinds of action, and yet we need strength and wisdom to carry on. Of course, we can only do this if the Holy One is holding us as a great lover, taking away our fear, doing the knowing, and satisfying our desires. If we can allow the Holy One to embrace us, we will go back to our life of action with new vitality, but it will be a smooth flow. It will be no longer ourselves that act. In the book of Galatians, it says, it is not me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. When we sit in this divine love, we are embraced by light and thus prepared to have a life of generosity and grace. Father Richard Rohr, uh, a contemplative, emphasizes the freedom that arises when we sit in contemplation. He says this, contemplation waits for the moments, creates the moments where all can be a silent prayer. It refuses the very distinction between action and stillness. Contemplation is essentially non-dual consciousness that overcomes the gap between us and God, outer and inner, either or, me and you. Let us sing the meditative song, Come and Fill Our Hearts.
I invite the children to come forward for family time. Good morning. You can have a seat in front of these. Yeah. All right. So I have a word that you maybe haven't seen before. Do you know what it is? Tazeh. Let's say it together. Tazeh. And that's the kind of service we're having. And it means that we're going to be singing and praying and having silence. And I brought you up here to see this whole, whole wall of light. Because one of the things that we do in our church is we use light as a sign that God loves us. So we have light our candles to show that God's helping us be kind inside. And we have all our lights here today to help remind us that we can pray for others for the light of God to be in them and help them and heal them. Sometimes if you're tempted to do something really mean, like say something not too nice, don't you sometimes hear a little voice that says, ah, that's not good. Isn't that what happens? You know, that happens to us. That's God inside of us saying, be nice, be kind. We call that the light of Christ. So this is our wall of lights and we always put it up in Taze. Usually we have Taze service at nighttime. And it's dark, and so we sit in the darkness, and we have only have a little bit of light. But this light is to help remind us to be that we are loved and to be loving to others. And this is called taze because of the kind of service. It's a little different today, isn't it? We didn't have you know the kinds of music we always have, so it's a taze service. We have them every other month, and on the fifth Sunday of every month that we have five Sundays. So now you know the word taze. Let's have a prayer. God, help us to be kind and loving. Help us to live in your light, which reminds us to be good and to be caring to other people. Thank you for our family and for our church and for our teachers, and may we love each other today. Amen. Amen. You may go to Sunday school. One of the powerful things that silence does for me is to make me aware of changes that I might need to make. This week was especially hard in accepting some people and some circumstances. The Gospel of Matthews, Matthew says this. Let me find my page here. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not 70 times, but 70 times 7. So this is a book that I use quite often, Wash the Feet of the World with Mother Teresa. It's my favorite devotional. And I want to read this um, little essay today. It is reasonable that we expect much of each other within the community of faith. It is appropriate to believe that such a community will be a safe place for us, as well as a place of nurture and care. However, we need to be careful that we do not expect the impossible, and as a result, become intolerant and judgmental with those within the community of faith when those in the community of faith fail us in some way. No community of faith is perfect. And Christian community will always need to be characterized by forgiveness and reconciliation. Mother Teresa makes a practical observation. Do not be surprised or become preoccupied by each other's failure. Rather see and find in each other that which is good, for each one of us is created in the image of God. This is not so much a call to tolerance, it certainly is not blank with approval that we can do whatever we like, even when it hurts others. Rather, it is a call to humility and great generosity of heart and spirit. Just as we fail others, so others will fail us. And their failure should not be the cause for rejection or indifference or anger. Indeed, something very different should dance into view. The offense or failure should not become the focus of our relationship, but rather forgiveness and seeing the good in each other. This is an act of faith. It is an act of empowerment 
because it has the view of what is possible than what has occurred. And so this reminded me of a time, not only this week when I had a hard time forgiving, but of a time when I had to forgive someone uh, close to me. Most of you know, and you might have heard me tell this before, that I grew up in a foster family. My parents abandoned me when I was very young. And I was in foster homes, uh, 27 foster homes, by the time I was 18 years old. And so after I became an adult and was on my own, I looked up and found my brothers and sisters, and one of them knew where my dad was. My mother had died by that time, so I did not get to see her. And she said, would you like to meet your dad? And I thought about this long and hard, and I had carried a lot of anger for many, many years at my parents because the life I had was not a happy one. And so I wasn't sure I wanted to meet him, but being my curious self, I said, okay, I think I should meet him. And so we arranged that I would meet him in Virginia. I lived in Pennsylvania at the time. And so I was gonna fly down and they were gonna meet me at the airport. We were gonna spend a couple hours together and see how that went and then we would go from there. So I was very apprehensive about this and I, I was a Christian, I prayed a lot. And I thought, you know, I don't know how I can forgive this man who deserted me and never cared for me. And so sometimes in the silence, God comes to us. And my silence happened to be in my sleep. So that night I went to sleep and I dreamed that I was in the airport and I was, my father was coming towards me and he was coming to me with open arms. And I was like this and I didn't have my arms open. But my body was inside of Jesus, and Jesus' arms were out. And so my arms had to be out because the arms of Jesus were out. And as my father got closer, Jesus' arms went around him, and so did mine. So I woke up that morning thinking, okay, that's, that's you know, hopefully that's what will happen. I can forgive this man. And that is exactly what happened. I got off the plane, and he came to me with open arms, and I ran to him. And in that moment, there was a reconciliation, not of words, but of silence and love. And that's how God came to me in my silence to show me that forgiveness is key. It didn't mean everything was gonna be right from then on, that we didn't have to have conversations. And I actually had very little to do with him after that. He was still an alcoholic, but um, he did contact me from time to time and would talk with me on the phone. Sometimes the love of God comes when we cannot give it. And when we sit in the silence, God enables us to love. And I'm especially appreciative of this service today after the events of the week where people are so judgmental and so harsh with one another about what's happening in our political world especially, but also in, in little neighborhoods. Um, I went to the grocery store recently and there was a woman in front of me that had dozens of coupons and she had a food stamp card and she had a little bit of cash and she got to the end and the cashier, she was like 88 cents short or something like that. And so she's hunting for it. I said, I got it, I got it, you know. And she says, no, no, I got this, I got this, I planned for this. And it was very much a part of her having this pride to pay for everything. And the guy behind me was so ticked off he started saying the F word and stomped out. And I had a hard time forgiving him. And then I had to remember that my unforgiving heart was no different than his unforgiving heart. And so this service helps me ask God to be that light, to be that forgiveness. And when we do, the reward is great. Let us be in silence. <coughs>
to a time of intercessory prayer, and we invite you to say out loud the name of a person or place you're holding in prayer. And we'll begin by singing the Kyrie, and then we'll have prayers and sing the Kyrie again, and we'll do this a number of times. you to pray now with me the prayer of Jesus on page four of your bulletin as translated by Jim Cotter. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, Strengthen us from trials too great to endure. Spare us from the grip of all that is evil. Free us, for you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. We now invite you to come forward and light a prayer candle and put.
put it in the sand tray as you like, and we will be singing our song, O Lord, Hear My Prayer.
now have an opportunity to give our gifts to the ministry of this congregation and to the community. So we invite you to place your connection cards along with your donations in the offering plates. Will the ushers please come forward?
playing today it was quite lovely uh, the flowers of the altar are from our garden planted by Connie Cook and uh, we're so appreciative of them a few announcements on the back of your bulletin you have an invitation to a special presentation on July 28th so please keep that in mind our new member class is next Sunday following worship we're having a potluck uh, if you are interested in what our church is about that's a good class to come to we have a good fun time so I hope to see many of you there along with our new members who are already in the class this Sunday is the last Sunday of gay pride month and during social hour Jody Gibson is going to be sharing a little of her journey as a gay woman so we'll gather here and have our refreshments when you hear the bell ring that means it's time to stop chattering and we'll listen to her for a little bit on her faith journey. So uh, hear now the benediction. Beloved, let us go forth with love. Let us spend time in prayer and silence so we can be forgiving and kind. Amen. Amen. Amen.